than 48 hours away from a whole new slate of new laws going into effect in Florida. Friday, July 1st is the day. Everything from new abortion restrictions, new laws on what teachers in Florida are allowed to talk about, and that record-setting state budget. How does it all impact you? Here's Capitol Reporter for Saunders. A handful of 2022's most controversial bills come online at the end of the work week. There you go. That includes GOP goals like HB5, the 15-week abortion ban making exceptions only for fatal fetal abnormalities. Also HB7, a ban on critical race theory concepts in schools and workplace training. Plus, please say gay, please say gay. What critics call the don't say gay bill, prohibiting instruction on gender identity and sexual orientation in K through three classrooms or where not age appropriate. All three have drawn legal challenges and are part of an agenda top Democrats call dangerous and hyperpartisan. None of these were, are, are issues that are pressing or important and certainly don't improve the quality of your family's life nor mine. And they're they're really just culture war distractions. A GOP majority, meanwhile, cheering the slate of new laws as fighting wokeism, defending parents' rights and protecting unborn life. This is a home run session. We have a governor who's probably the most conservative governor in the country and is willing to uh, lead by action. But there was plenty of bipartisanship, too. A few widely supported new laws include allowing local governments to ban smoking at beaches and parks except for unfiltered cigars ending FSA testing in the state, plus making strawberry shortcake the official Florida dessert. And we can't forget that record-setting $110 billion state budget. Filled with federal stimulus money and higher-than-expected revenue, the plan has more for teachers and students, funds a state guard, plus $16 billion put in reserve. It also uses an October cut to the state gas tax and several sales tax holidays to save Floridians $1.24 billion through the next fiscal year. At the Capitol, Forrest Saunders, ABC Action News. Next here tonight, the White House is now sending 56,000 vaccine doses for monkeypox to high transmission areas, including the state of Florida, California, New York, and Illinois. The agency will distribute an additional 240,000 doses in the next few weeks. Health officials say they will provide vaccines to people with known close contact to someone who has been diagnosed with monkeypox. Meanwhile, the CDC has opened up an emergency center in direct response to this outbreak. It's going to be used for both government and non-government agencies to respond. Meanwhile, there's another kind of outbreak that has medical professionals on alert tonight, meningitis. The outbreak is growing here in Florida, and tonight there's a new push for high-risk people to get vaccinated. ABC Action News reporter Larissa Scott here with that story. It's in a total league of its own. Meningococcal disease. 70% of people who are untreated will die of the disease. Uh, with treatment, 10% will still die of the disease. That's why the Florida Department of Health and the CDC are sounding the alarm. Health officials say the meningococcal outbreak in Florida is now one of the worst in history. The CDC confirms at least 26 cases so far and seven deaths in the state. It's incredibly, incredibly high number of deaths. Health officials say it's mostly spread through saliva and close lengthy contact. The good news about it is it, it can't spread nearly as well as uh, coronaviruses. It's not airborne. The two most common types of meningococcal infections are meningitis, which is an infection of the lining of the brain and spinal cord, and a bloodstream infection. Both can quickly become deadly. Be aware of the big three symptoms. If you have a combination of headache, fever, and a stiff neck, you need emergency care emergency. You can go from those symptoms to dead in 24 hours. Other signs of an infection include nausea, vomiting, and a dark purple rash. Symptoms can first seem mild and then worsen fast. If you get aggressive antibiotic treatment very, very quickly, you still see one in five individuals lose a limb, lose hearing, have neurological damage, have brain damage. Meningitis is no joke. As health officials monitor the growing number of meningitis cases in our community, they are now urging people to get vaccinated. The vaccine's about 85% efficacious, means it's a pretty darn good vaccine. Doctors stress this disease is vaccine preventable. They're now urgently pushing for the most vulnerable populations in this outbreak to get vaccinated as soon as possible. That includes men who have sex with men, people who are HIV positive, anyone who is immunocompromised, and college students. It's on the childhood schedule. It's recommended between the ages of 11 and 12. It has to be boosted. Go get your booster if you have haven't already or go start your primary series. In Tampa, Larissa Scott, ABC Action News.
Next here tonight is a TikTok challenge ruining Florida beaches. Next at 530, what is behind these deep holes in the sand? The concern now for sea turtles and the new way that a local nonprofit is giving back to those who really need it right now. Welcome back. All right, check out these giant holes on Southwest Florida beaches and a TikTok challenge may be to blame for this. Uh, the challenge basically tells people to see how deep of a hole they can dig. You got to love social media, right? Well, other problems that these holes can cause big concern for sea turtles. We have moms on the beach at night and we have the babies going to the water at night. They face so many threats already. This is one small thing that we can all do to help them. Right, so bottom line, they're asking anyone who does dig a hole on the beach to fill it back in. Next here tonight, the price of helping people is going up, and just like everything else these days, and local nonprofits are finding it harder to do what they do best. In our ongoing series, The Price of Paradise, Michael Paluska shows us how new help is on the way. 
what will $90,000 do for you? I mean, the most amazing thing is it's gonna help us retrofit our box truck so it can be a mobile office so we can go and set up. And then it's also gonna help us um, hire a part-time employee they can just be focused on mobile back to work. One day, Eleanor Saunders, the executive director of ECHO, wants to put her food pantry out of business. The $90,000 in grant money from United Way Suncoast is a good start. Man, we just want to create those opportunities for people to provide for themselves. And we will be able to go to the motels and connect people with employment, connect people with affordable housing options, connect people with reliable transportation, and childcare through the Early Learning Coalition. In the nonprofit's 35 year history, the money couldn't have come at a more dire moment. They are serving more than 15,000 of their neighbors in unincorporated Hillsborough County every single year. Listen, it's a tsunami of homelessness. We've never seen anything like this. I've been in this community almost 20 years. I started as a volunteer with Echo like 18 years ago. I've never seen it like this, never. I've never seen more men cry um, in my lifetime than I've seen here in the last year and a half. And it's because their, their hope is gone. They're hopeless. Iris Thurman is the advocacy director at ECHO. She's seeing people in their 60s and 70s on fixed incomes, homeless for the first time, and families. Sometimes we have to read between the lines. We had a mother that came in and she said, no, we're sleeping with friends. And her eight-year-old said, no, we just slept on the side of the building. And she was like, that is not true. That is not true. But it was the fear of getting her kids taken away. About 40% of the organizations that are receiving funding from us are new to the funding process. Josh Dunn is the money man at United Way Suncoast. He says they received $15 million worth of requests for help, but they could only fund 18 million of that. They are really big numbers, and it's because just as the prices are increasing for the everyday person, they're also increasing for the nonprofit agencies. We actually did a survey of our partners and found that costs are increasing for them to deliver services, to employ people, to deliver the services that the families in need depend on. And they're just being generous, so we're super happy that they're doing that. Echo is one of the 88 very lucky organizations to get money. Saunders putting it right back into helping even more people get jobs. But what we're super excited about in the last 11 months, Almost 120 neighbors have found gainful employment, meaningful employment, $15 an hour or more through our job coaches. In Hillsborough County, Michael Paluska, ABC Action News.